Hi, my name is Aldo Vicente. In this video tutorial, we'll be going over the basics of cameras in Redshift for Maya. We'll start with a quick overview of what Maya cameras and features are supported by Redshift. Then we'll move on to the different Redshift camera types and how they work. And finally, we'll look at how to use some of Redshift's powerful lens shaders like bokeh and photographic exposure. Uh, so let's start by opening up our demo scene. So here we have a really simple interior scene lit with a portal light and a physical sun and sky. Uh, you can see we have some different colored spheres uh, sitting around the room. These are placed exactly 90 degrees apart so that it's easy for us to sort of orient ourselves as we're changing lenses and moving the camera around the room. So here in the center of the room we have our render camera. Now this is just a regular Maya camera that we could create uh, through the standard Maya menus. Redshift fully supports the native Maya cameras along with most of the camera attributes that we see here. So if we change our focal length for instance, we'll see that Redshift accurately translates that into our render here. Uh, and the same goes for uh, pretty much all of these attributes with the exception of these six down here. So currently Redshift does not support these attributes between pre-scale and post-scale, uh, nor does it support the environment image plane here. And it also doesn't support these uh, less commonly used features in output settings and special effects. So of course that's something to keep in mind. Um, aside from that, everything else up here uh, works just like normal. So now let's jump down here to our Redshift rollout and talk about camera types. So if we click on this camera type dropdown, we'll see that we have five different Redshift cameras to choose from, uh, starting of course with the standard type. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. When we're using this standard type, of course, we're telling Redshift to adhere to these camera attributes that we're defining up here, uh, just like a regular camera. Now, if we switch over to our second camera type, which is fisheye, uh, we'll see that our viewport is going to stay pretty much the same, but our render view is going to update to this cool uh, fisheye lens. So now Redshift is ignoring all these uh, standard camera attributes, and instead it's adhering to these attributes, these fisheye attributes to find down here. So here we have a field of view control along with a horizontal scale and a vertical scale. Of course, our field of view defines how wide an angle uh, our camera can see. So with an FOV of 180, that means that our camera can see uh, 180 degrees in front of us. So if we adjust our camera back to the original point, we can see uh, that we can see the green sphere here on the left side of the frame, then 90 degrees to the rest, red sphere, and then 180 degrees over to the yellow sphere on the opposite side of the frame. And of course, if we want, we can lower this um, field of view down to whatever number, but we can't actually uh, bring it up above 180 degrees, at least not with this camera type. Okay, and then we have our horizontal and vertical scale, and these literally just scale our frame uh, in or out, and they're useful if we want to get rid of these black circles, uh, or this black circle along the outside of our frame. So if we uh, scale both of these up to 1.41, now our frame is fit perfectly inside of that circle. Okay, so that's it for the fisheye lens. Now let's switch over to our next camera type, which is spherical. So this camera type captures a 180 degree field of view uh, vertically and 360 degree field of view horizontally. So we can see all the way around the room and actually see all four spheres. This should look pretty familiar to anyone who has used uh, lat long images for HDR lighting. So if we have an aspect ratio of 2 to 1 like we do here, this camera essentially lets us render a lat long image of our scene. And then of course that image can be used as a texture for a dome light or for an environment map. So it's a really neat tool, and as you can see, there's no extra attributes to it, so it's really simple and straightforward. Okay, so let's uh, jump over to our next camera type, which is cylindrical. And the cylindrical camera type is very similar to the spherical camera, except that now we actually have control over our horizontal and vertical fields of view. So we can see that um, by default, uh, these are the same fields of view values as our spherical camera. That's a 360 horizontal and 180 vertical, but we can adjust them uh, however we need to. So for instance, if we set our horizontal field of view to uh, 180 and set our camera back to the default position, uh, now we can see again that we can only see um, from the green sphere to the yellow sphere again. And we'll also notice some stretching here. So one thing to know is whenever we adjust our field of view, if we want to keep everything from stretching out, we would also want to adjust our frame's aspect ratio accordingly. So in this case, um, since now our horizontal and our vertical field of view 
are the same, uh, we would want to get an aspect ratio of 1 to 1 in order to eliminate this stretching. And here's what our image would look like uh, with that um, horizontal and vertical field of view at 180 uh, and a 1 to 1 aspect ratio. Okay, so let's switch back. Okay, so that's it for cylindrical. Finally, let's check out the stereospherical camera. So this camera type is primarily for VR applications. Um, it's kind of like our cylindrical camera, but this one can actually capture two images and render them both in our single frame here. So here we can see that we actually have two lat long images laid out side by side in our frame. And again, since this is primarily for VR rendering, the idea is that each of these uh, captures corresponds to one of the viewer's eyes. So let's take a look at our controls over here. So the first one we have is mode. Uh, this is just how the two captured images uh, will be laid out within our frame. So the first mode of course is side by side and we can see that we essentially have two lat longs laid out side by side. Now if we switch this over to top and bottom uh, we'll have those same two lat longs um, but again, laid out uh, top and bottom in our frame. And we can also look at uh, just the left eye capture or just the right eye capture. So our next attribute is separation, which is literally how far apart we're capturing uh, the images for each. Eye. Right now, since separation is at zero, we don't see a difference between the left and right. But let's set this to 100 centimeters and I'll go ahead and do uh, one test render of the left and one test render of the right so we can compare the two. Okay, now if we compare the two images we can see that the two eyes are being captured from slightly different spots. And it's also easy to see if we're in top bottom mode. You can see they're slightly offset. So on average, people's eyes are about six centimeters apart. So that's generally a good value if we're gonna be rendering it for VR. Okay, and down here, just like with our cylindrical camera, we have horizontal FOV and vertical FOV control. And these work pretty much exactly the same, except um, of course it applies to both images being captured. And again, just like with our cylindrical camera, as we change uh, our different settings, we should also be adjusting our aspect ratio accordingly. So if a single lat long has a ratio of two to one, then when we're in side by side mode, we wanna make sure that we're doubling our width to four one, whereas if we're in top bottom Bottom mode, we want to make sure that we're uh, increasing our vertical uh, aspect to uh, 1 1 to make sure that we're not getting this uh, stretching effect. Okay, so that's pretty much it for camera types. Uh, in the next part, we'll be talking about lens shaders.